Now, we've spent a significant amount of time talking about acid halides, specifically generally in acid chloride, uh, in reactions. But how would we make an acid chloride? Let's say, for example, we had a carboxylic acid. How could we make the acid chloride from it? Now, there are a few different methods uh, that we can do this, and I'm not necessarily going to go through the mechanisms for these. I'm just going to talk about how, um, or a reagent that you can use to make this occur. So here we have a carboxylic acid, and the typical way of doing this, because it has quite a few advantages, is to use a reagent called thionyl chloride. Thionyl chloride will convert a carboxylic acid into an acid chloride. And it will do so in good yields. It also makes um, SO2 gas and it will make HCl gas as well. So you'll just have to make sure that you're in a fume hood to avoid making these nasty gases outside. Now, how does this actually happen? Well, there's quite a few steps and this thionyl chloride does generate a Cl- that will attack the carbonyl um, after it's kind of been activated by the sulfur bonding to the oxygen up here. And that's how the sulfur gets two oxygens on it, the SO2. And, and then effectively this oxygen right here will get the second uh, bond to it and things just kind of move around like that. But one of the problems with thionyl chloride, and, and it's a wonderful reagent, is that sometimes it's hard to obtain. It's fairly reactive. And it also has some uh, weapons-related applications. And so you'll have to fill out a little bit of paperwork to obtain it. And this shouldn't be a problem if you're at a university or you're in a well-known research lab and you have documentation on what you're doing with the thionyl chloride. But there are other methods for this. And I haven't checked into whether these uh, avoid the uh, aforementioned problems with thionyl chloride, but they do do the same reaction in a little bit different way. So since it does the same reaction, I'm going to stick with the same um, carboxylic acid and we can use PCL3. Now remember PBR3 slash PCL3? That's the reagent that converts alcohols into chlorides. Well, here's an OH right here, and it can do the exact same thing. It can convert that OH into a chloride. And again, I'm really going to skip the mechanism for this, just talking about how you can make these. Now, it's also possible to substitute this for the bromine equivalent, and in that case, you would make uh, the brominated version of this acid. So in that case, it would be an acid bromide, which I suspect has similar reactivity, but I think most people use the acid chlorides just because chloride is a little bit more available than bromine. Now, I also checked there is another reagent that we could use, and that's oxyl chloride, oxyl chloride, which is a derivative of oxalic acid. So 
So this is in a lot of ways similar to thionyl chloride. It's a little more expensive and the con reaction conditions are milder. And you, people that are a little bit more familiar with organic chemistry will recognize that this is a reagent that gets used in swern oxidation. And swern oxidation, it, you can take this reagent right here, oxal chloride, and combine it with dimethyl sulfoxide and it will convert an alcohol into a ketone or an aldehyde. It's a, it's a great way to convert that. If you have a secondary alcohol, it'll go to a ketone. If you have a primary, it'll go to an aldehyde. It's a great way to make an aldehyde. Anyway, that's a little side thing, but I'm just pointing out that this reagent is used in more than just uh, making acid halides. So you can use this along with Let's stick with our same uh, carboxylic acid here. Because this has a little bit different uh, reaction conditions. So we have this and we're going to add a catalytic amount of dimethyl form amide or DMF which is one of those polar aprotic solvents. And in this case, we'll be able to convert the carboxylic acid into the acid chloride. And this is also going to make some carbon dioxide and some carbon monoxide. So we'll want to vent this well. And also some HCl. I saw some people talking about how you can um, add a little base into the mixture, a certain kind, and then you'll be able to avoid generating HCO. But you're going to want um, ventilation anyway, so I'm not sure how much of a problem it is. Now, you do need this dimethyl form amide. It's important because this is actually part of the reagent that chlorinates the carboxylic acid. And it makes an imidyl chloride derivative, and that's what does the chlorinating. So, this is just a way, a little discussion on how to synthesize acid halides. Of course, if you wanted to make a different halide, you'd need to substitute the appropriate one in. What this allows us to do is to convert something that's much less reactive, the carboxylic acids, into a functional group that is way more reactive, much more reactive. And then we can use that reactivity in further transformations.